Hey ballers, Squiggles here, bringing you a game on Shakira's Plateau, a Protoss versus Terran between EG's Puma and Mao's Hazu. That's right, or Hazu Obs, I believe. And this game was played, if I am correct, I think, for IEM. I think, I think, I think. The replay that I downloaded said one thing, and then on the actual replay it said something else. So I don't actually know. But regardless, it should be pretty good. I am definitely excited because EG Puma, this Korean player that Team EG did pick up, is so good. And, of course, Hasu Ops pretty good as well. And, of course, Shakira's Plateau is one of those great maps. You can see the Zonlog Watchtowers here. One of these great maps where just, I mean, it's, it's, it's big enough that a lot of macro stuff happens. It's small enough that we can see some one-base plays. There's a cool little choke right here, so you can take this natural pretty easily. And we see that factor into different people's strategies quite a bit. We can see that uh, Mao's Hazu is going to go ahead and put down this pylon here, followed by the gateway. Not worried about walling at all. I mean, no real need, need to against a Terran player. And meanwhile, it looks like this this SCV is going to be patrolling. And there goes down the barracks. And it looks like Puma is actually going to go ahead and wall. Uh, not really that big of a deal, I think. Uh, sometimes on some maps, it can be a little bit crazy where Protoss can pressure down here and pick off stuff. But because of this choke and because EG Puma could definitely just expand and hold right here, not a big deal. And you can prevent any kind of early run buys and stuff. One thing I do see people do sometimes as well is a Terran player will actually take this SCV off of building the barracks for just a second, start a second supply depot right here, and then immediately go back and start making the barracks again. And all that does is just make that tight wall very, very early so you cannot get scouted because StarCraft is a game of information and information denial. So kind of a cool thing that I've been seeing Terran players do as of late. Looks like Hazu going to be doing everything pretty standard. Getting a cyber core. Does have one gas right now. And sending out that scouting probe who is going to meet the SCV as he leaves Puma's own base. Of course, Puma did get that supply depot down well in advance. So there's going to be no information at all that Hazu is going to see. Except that there is, in fact, a barracks. Now, he does not know there's one gas and that the command center is turning into an orbital. Although he can at least guess this part because that is so super standard. Whether you are doing an early expand, whether you're doing a one base play, whether you're doing anything, Terrans always get that orbital because, you know, the mules and the scans just so, so good and pivotal in all of the Terran strategies. It looks like Hazu going to be, or Hasu, sorry, Hazu, <laughs> just making up words uh, and pr pronunciations, going to be chrono boosting out warp gate it looks like so it could be putting on some early pressure usually you don't see that uh, but look at that no it looks like he's gonna go ahead and get a nexus and i believe that was scouted by the scv let's go ahead and look yes indeed it was so or uh puma rather knows that hasu is gonna go ahead and expand and how is puma gonna respond looks like he's taking a second gas so he has both gases now and it looks like a factory just now finishing here comes a starport and we do have a tech lab going down on the factory so i am gonna assume we're gonna be seeing banshees although it could be blue flame hellions but really really it's it's probably gonna be banshees and banshees are pretty good especially on these spawn positions because they are close by air you can go all the way around here you can abu abuse this cliff back here lots of room look at all this room that banshees have to maneuver so we could definitely be seeing some of that and it's gonna be up to Hasu to defend looks like he is gonna go for two more gateways He's gonna go for a three gate expand build of course getting that expo down super fast and of course he can hold with his units right here and defend but it looks like no he is going to be moving out with this first stalker just wants to see if he can get some map control see if he can get some scouting down looks like there is this pylon right here nice position on this pylon by Hasu he's going to be able to scout any drops to go around this way although the potential for that to happen are slim to none since he can just go that way but also he's going to be able to warp in reinforcements be warp in a counter attack and do all kinds of little shenanigans with that pylon for very, very little investment. So very good cost to benefit ratio going on there. Now the Puma does have a lot of Marines out and this bunker is almost done. This bunker should be a giveaway. It looks like three stalkers are gonna come in and these three stalkers could definitely do a lot of damage to the Marines. But as this bunker finishes, the stalker is gonna have to fall back because they, yeah, they can't really take on the bunker. And it looks like Hasu did a decent job, did take some damage onto the hull of this stalker. But other than that, not really taking that much damage at all. Meanwhile, it looks like there is Cloak on the way. There is a Banshee on the way. More racks coming down as well. And also getting a tech lab on this factory. So we could see siege tanks with a lot more Marines. And it looks like there is a reactor. So we could see unupgraded Marines. Actually, this is kind of a cool style Terrans have been doing. Where they just get a ton of unupgraded Marines, a few siege tanks, and some Banshees. 
and try to just roll over the um, the Protoss player. Of course, he could probably get a uh, the uh, yeah the Raven. Yeah, what he's building right now because those point defense drones are so good. But right now it looks like uh, Cloak not quite finished. Now there we go. Now it's finished. But really, Hasu has nothing even close in the area. These probes are just kind of running around in panic. Oh, there's one Stalker and instantly the Cloak. And so where is, there we go, Robo is just now finishing and Chrono boosting out that Observer, but there's a timing here where Puma could definitely do a lot of damage. You can see he's already up to seven, eight, nine kills right now, focusing down more probes, focusing on the ones he's actually killing, and doing a nice job of just staying away so that he can um, run away from these Stalkers, and the Stalkers can't really get a lot of damage done to him. Looks like, oh, yes, he does get one more kill. She's up to 12 kills now, a Sergeant, this Banshee. Oh, and there is the Stalker shooting the Cloaked Banshee, so the Banshee knows there is an Observer out, and he pulls back instantly, only taking one shot. So that's very, very, very good by Puma. Looks like salvaging both of those bunkers is getting out. It looks like he does have a Raven. And now getting Siege Tank. Siege Mode not started quite yet. And you can see no re or no Tech Lab at all going down. So just going to be a whole bunch of unupgraded Marines. And keeping this Banshee alive is actually quite important for Puma. As he's going to be able to harass. He's going to be able to force Hasu to do stuff like this. Which is pin units in the back of his base by his mineral patches. This means that Hasu is not going to be able to be that aggressive. Because he's not really going to have that many units he can move out. He needs to defend and he may actually even get a second observer. I'm not sure. I'm going to go to units really quick. It looks like two observers are out on the field. Yes, indeed. So he can defend against everything that's going on. And look at this. It looks like a little bit of shooting going on by Puma. Does have one tank done. Second tank should be almost done. And there we go. Siege tank or siege tech on the, on the way. Another Banshee on production as well. And we have a whole bunch of Marines, a single siege tank, and a Raven moving out for Puma. And hmm, this is what I'm talking about. Hasu could do something with this pylon if he scouts and sees that this attack is coming now. It looks like, hmm, I don't know, uh, this probe <laughs> fighting off the SCV. But you know what? The SCV called in some friends, and they took care of that probe. Easy peasy. And oh, look at this. I can see it. The warp ins. Looks like three zealots and a stalker are going to be warped in. And now here comes a counterattack by Hasu. And it looks like there are some more reinforcements from Puma. But I think they're just on move. Yeah, there's no attack moving going on. They're just rallied. There we go. Now he sees it. Now he's going to be attacking. How is he going to handle this? It looks like, yes, he is going to go ahead and unsiege and move back with his entire force to clean up this little aggression by Hasu and also raising these two supply depots. Does have a siege tank sieged back here. It looks like the <laughs> stalker can hit him, but the siege tank is focusing down the stalker. Good choice for two reasons. One, he um, will not splash his buildings by killing the zealots, and two, the stalker's the only thing that can kill him. So nice job focus firing the correct unit there. And now Puma, look at this. This is pretty scary, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is what I was talking about is you get a whole bunch of Banshees. You get Siege Tanks with Siege Mode and as many Marines as you could possibly pump out. You can see he's getting mar Marines or the potential for Marines four at a time. He can also get Banshees and Siege Tanks one at a time. He does have the one Raven out and he is stockpiling this energy. Raven is almost full at 170 energy right now. And if he can hold out this attack by Hasu, who actually has a huge um, a supply lead, I think, as far as units go. And not supply lead per se. They're about even. But, I mean, 25 SCVs to 38 probes and Hasu does have that extra base so that means that Puma has the bigger army but Hasu has the bigger or no yeah Puma has the bigger army Hasu has the bigger economy so Puma needs to make something happen you can see this is definitely one base one base play out of Puma he has not built any more SCVs for quite a while and even pulling SCVs it looks like he has yeah quite a few SCVs right here and here comes Hasu and he's doing a great job of just delaying Delaying, delaying. That is the name of the game because he knows his economy is better. You can see he has a Twilight Council going right down right now, adding on additional gateways. And every time Puma has to siege up these siege tanks, that just delays his push a little bit. Now, his Banshees are getting a little bit out of control. Looks like this Raven does have full energy. Now, that is enough for two point defense drones. And one where one point defense drone is like really, really good, two is like ungodly. And considering how many stalkers are in this mix, that's a lot of stalkers. I mean, here come a couple of good force fields. Nice job, nice job. And it looks like, no, Puma not even going to throw down anything. D did keep all of his, not all of his Marines, but all of his um, Banshees alive, which is really what he needed. And all these siege tanks going to be sieging up, just just moving forward little by little. And it looks like, ooh, it looks like he actually got the Observer. And look at this. Oh, the Observer's gone. And here comes Puma going to move in here with these cloaked Banshees doing lots of damage. And Hazu cannot actually do anything right now. So he's going to have to just go ahead and attack and focusing down one Immortal very quickly, then just doing tons of damage. 
to the Stalkers. Here we go, and it looks like Puma now is going to be throwing down both of these point defense drones. And look, you can just see them soaking up so much damage. All of those Stalkers doing absolutely nothing in that fight. And Puma, in what could have been a very, very close match, absolutely dominates Hasu because of those point defense drones. He was able to dictate the engagement. Nice job sniping that that uh, observer, and that's really what it came down to. Is once that observer was down, or was down, then these four banshees were able to cloak and just wreck havoc. And Hasu had no choice, no choice, but to attack into Puma. And that's exactly what Puma wanted. He had all of his siege tanks sieged. He had a ton of marines ready, and he had both of these point defense drones. He was able to throw down, making most of Hasu's army obsolete and not able to do anything. Of course, all those stalkers just absolutely doing nothing. So great job by Puma. Wow, what an awesome one base build. If you're a Terran player, you should definitely try this out. Quite cool, quite cool. Uh, lots of Banshees, lots of tanks with Siege, one Raven, and as many Marines that are unupgraded as you can possibly pump out. So, nice job by Puma. Well-deserved win from him. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave comments, as always, below. This is Squiggles. I'll see you guys later.